how are you with your time management? Do you keep saying I need to find some time to work out yet you never seem to be able to do so? Do you feel like all of your family obligations and things that you need to do for work are getting in the way? Well, lately I had a chance to talk to a couple of clients and one mentioned an exercise that we did looking at time management and how we spend those 168 hours that we all have each and every week. Everyone has them. I don't care who you consider as your mentor, the, the most famous popular person. One thing we all have in common, the need to eat, the need for sleep. And we also have the same amount of time. I won't go into any other needs that we all have in common. But the main thing is there's really no excuse because we all have to fit in a certain amount of work in a limited amount of time. And we never know when we're going to get ready to leave here. So really, it's the one equalizer that every one of us has to deal with. So how do you spend your 168 hours? And that's something that I want to talk to you about today. One now, of the best things to sometimes do is the same thing we do with food journals. And that is just start monitoring how you spend your time. From the time you get up to the time you go to bed and even track how, all, how long you're actually sleeping. Again, look at 168 hours, but start with that 24 hour work day. And what I want you to do is keep track of two days during the week and one weekend day. Now, perhaps you already have a pretty good idea if you're pretty self-aware of how you spend your 168 hours in a week or even what you generally do in a day. But for most of us, similarly, just as we do with knowing what we're actually eating, what we think we're eating and what we're actually eating when we take a, few, a food journal, oftentimes two totally different things. So what I want you to do is just monitor yourself for those three days to start with. Or even, here's another option, just draw up your ideal 24 hour schedule. How much sleep do you want to get first? And then work backwards from either the time you go to bed or work forward from the time that you get up, what you want to be doing every hour of that day. Once you have that, it's just now kind of put it easily. I don't care whether it's an Excel sheet, whether it's an app, just put it down somewhere what you want to do in each one of those time slots. Depending on how you are, maybe you want to go in 15 minute increments, half hour increments, or one hour increments. Doesn't matter, whatever works best for you. After that, check for the activities that you look at. What needs to be eliminated? What are you doing for yourself? What are you doing for other people? What really needs to be done? And you may find, as we often find with a food diary, what are you wasting time doing? Uh, if you're part of the generation that spends a lot of time playing video games, then maybe you need to go ahead and cut back an hour, two hours or whatever it is in order for you to accomplish what you want to do. And perhaps that's one of the other main things to look at. Before you start all of this, what do you want to find time in your life to do? And now where can you free up that time to do so? And then the other main thing is going to be once you get an idea of what really is vital and what isn't vital, one technique I recommend is once you have that list or once you look at the things on your list, figure out which things are actually priorities and which things are actually not priorities, which things are actually for you and benefit you, which things are not for you and which things do not necessarily benefit you, but they are for other people. Now, these things will change over days. We know this. You know, one day you may have to pick someone up. The next day you may not, etc. You know, but kids schedules pretty much remain the same. Your work schedule probably remains put pretty much the same. The other key thing is the length of time that you're going to train each day. That should be the same and you should be able to lock that into a time slot. After that, next thing I want you to do is plan ahead. Just go ahead and plan your week out. But before you even get to that, if that's too difficult, just go ahead and plan your day. Just plan your day. And once you have your day plan, then look at planning your week. Next thing you know, once you plan your week out, you can start planning a month. Then you could do a quarter. Then you can do even a half year. Then you can do a whole year. And I'm not talking about every single hour. No, but I'm saying it does get a lot easier as I talked about before where it's easier now to look at where you want to go this time next year because you pretty much have a schedule that you stick to, a routine. You know what you give time for and that which you measure, you give time for and that that you give time for is what is going to change. That's what you're going to give priority to. So plan ahead and stick to that plan, which leaves the last one. Try to think of your life as just one whole integrated way. This is definitely to my dads out there, but really to any parent. 
but particularly to my dads out there. One of the examples I gave one of my clients is make time for you to get your exercise in and view it the same way you view putting money in your 401k. You view getting money for a life insurance policy because let's be honest with a life insurance policy, you're not even going to benefit from it. You're doing so for your family in case of your death with a 401k, you will benefit from that. But one thing that both things have in common is that you do not have to save that money. You could actually spend that money today, death. but you do it now in order to have something for later. And after watching many spouses, family, friends, etc., have to take care of their sick loved one. I think your family would rather put up with the quote unquote inconvenience or just deal with you scheduling that two hour time slot, you know, three, four, five days a week for you to get your workout in than for them to have to take out six hours of their day when you are up in age and they now have to take care of you because of lifestyle choices that you made. Now we're not talking about lifestyle choices you didn't necessarily have anything to do with. We're all gonna get ill, we're all gonna die of something. But it's a lot of stress on your loved ones, on your kids, on spouses, etc., to have to take care of us when we get older. And I don't even necessarily wanna say when we get older because many of us are experiencing some serious, uh, we'll say, consequences of lifestyle choices that we made even in our 50s now. And if that's you, that's probably some slack maybe your kids have to pick up on, or maybe your spouse has to go ahead and take care of when you no longer can get around the way that you used to, when your medication needs to be filled. Bottom line is, and believe me, I've seen kind of examples where the resentment is real that people actually have, where it's like, you know what? If they would have stopped doing thus and so, I wouldn't have to go ahead and keep taking off of work to take them to doctor's appointments and to keep making sure everything is together. So look, do it for yourself now because you think you're doing it for them now. I think they would rather you do it for them and yourself later. So that's the importance of thinking about your life as a whole instead of just looking at where you're at today and trying to fit that time in. Okay. So again, just to recap, you got all the bullet points here, track your days, whether figure out first, what are you trying to fit in that you feel like you can't fit in and don't have time for? Then track two days during the week and then put in a weekend day. Then use some kind of time scheduling software, Excel sheet, piece of paper, whatever you use to put down in blocks what you're going to be doing. Then check for the activities, prioritize what needs to be done and toss out things that really don't need to be done. And you probably spend too much time on that you don't necessarily want to do. And then reduce, toss those out and put things in such as working out, exercising, meal prep, etc. Put those into your schedule and routine. Then make that plan. Make that plan for the day. Maybe make that plan for the week. Get going on it and then implement it. Think about your life as a whole, why you're doing it, and let that be the motivating factor that carries you when you get tired, when you feel like slacking, when you think, oh, well, this is just yet another thing I have to monitor. Uh, I think I heard uh, Brian Tracy say something like, I'm going to have a time wrong. But basically, for every one minute you spend, tracking something is going to save 10 minutes later. Don't know where that came from. Again, I may have butchered his time, but and I don't even know if that was research, but it certainly makes sense. At the very base level, it takes away a decision. And I am huge on lowering the number of decisions that I have to make every day because I do believe that we do get decision and mental fatigue. And so figure out what you're going to wear the day before. Figure out what you're going to do the day before. Figure out whether you're going to work out or not the day before. Actually, you should probably do that on Sunday. Figure out what you're going to eat the day before. Go ahead and throw it into your, your MyFitnessPal, whatever nutrition tracker you're, happen, you're having to use. Because the great part about those things, you can oftentimes put in the day before and then just make minor adjustments. That's a lot easier than looking at your app and trying to think, oh, what did I have to eat today? Uh, how much did I have? And now you're making more decisions. And then not only do you have to think about what you're going to eat, you're also factoring in subconsciously, at least how long it takes for you to put in the app. And next thing you know, you're just grabbing something convenient. All right. So good luck to you. Let me know if you have any questions or if you have any other tips on how you handle time management below. Peace.